So once you get onto the landing page, you click onto population health and then you click onto diabetes to actually go into diabetes population health dashboard. From there, you click onto the landing page. On the landing page, we can see that there are four quadrants. So we've got the population, the clinical, the finance, and the lifestyle change. On the population, it gives you a general um, overview or number of the total care population in North West London. We can also see the diagnosed diabetes population, the predicted diabetes population, the number of patients diagnosed with diabetes in the last in the past 12 months. The figures are on there, the diagnosed NDH patients, predicted NDH patients as well, and the percentage of patients with NDH who have moved to diabetes in the last 12 months. On the clinical quadrant, we have those patients that have uh, diabetic patients receiving all nine key care processes in the last 15 months. So we can see the number of patients and the percentage as well. We can see those that have controlled NICE targets in the last 12 months. We have the number of patients and the patients meeting the NICE targets um, percentage as well. We have the diabetes patients with complications in the last 12 months. We have the number of patients and the percentage as well. And those with unplanned admissions in the last 12 months, we have the total number and the unplanned admissions and, and percentage as well. And then on the third quadrant is the finance, and that obviously explains um, the related spend in relation to bed days based on the type 1 or type 2 diabetes. We also have those that have a related spend in the last 12 months um, based on the type 1 and the type 2 diabetes as well. And then the final quadrant is a lifestyle change, and that gives shows those that have diabetes and are sm then that smoke. It gives you a total number of patients and the percentage as well. We have those who have lost weight and the total number of, of patients and the percentage. Patients who have been offered structured education in the last 12 months, we have the number of patients and the percentage as well. And then we have the diabetes patients who have completed the structured education in the last 12 months, the total number and the percentage as well. To drill down into more detail, we just click on the arrows here, and that takes us to the population. On this first screen, the first thing to note first is we need to filter in the, you know, and drill it down to the actual cohort of patients we're interested in. So you can filter by the time frame if you want to select a certain time period. We can also drill down to get, you know, to drill down to your CCG of, of choice. You can also drill it down by the GP network and also by practice. And also this button here would be very useful every time you want to drill down to your own patient list. If you do have access to patient identifiable data, you can narrow it down to your own actual patients within your practice or your own cohort of patients. And on this particular page, this gives you an analysis of those patients that um, have, you know, have various, who have, you know, progressed over time based on their diagnosis time. So it, it narrows it down by those that have been diagnosed in the last, in past 12, two years, and those who have been diagnosed in over two, in under two years as well. So it gives you a total number of those and the di different, um, you know, um, diabetes that they have is type one, type two, or those in remission, and gives you a total figure in here. And we also talk narrow it down by the CCG so you can get the number of patients with NDH who have moved to diabetes as well and also on here it breaks it down by the EFI index and you can also you know get a cohort of patients from here as well and also by the age group. The next page you'll be looking at will be the actual versus expected. On this page here, also to note as well, every time you move on to another page, you will need to obviously change the filters to drill it down to your cohort of patients. Um, it, it basically gives a comparison between those that are non-diabetic hypoglycemia and those that are, have diabetes. So you can get your NDH patients numbers, those expected, and then an actual versus expected figure. Um, and also in the diabetes section as well. On here, you can also compare and based on their risk score. So for the NDH, it's defaulted to 5.6. And for those that um, have diabetes, it risk score is defaulted to 6. And you can obviously change that um, as you please. On here, it gives you a comparison of those that are diagnosed and those that are expected based on the HbA1s. You can obviously drill down for more information if you hover over it. It gives you a breakdown as well. The next page is the finance. 
So this basically covers talks about related spend for patients that on both that have been diagnosed over a certain period. So on here we can see those that have been diagnosed as well, same thing over two years and under two years, and we've got all the total figures. It also talks about those that spend month per month for patients as well, so you can have a bit more detailed analysis as well. Based on CCGs, you can also drill down to your CCG to see how much spend has occurred, and also you can narrow it down by age group as well. Okay. And then we then go into the target, the NICE target. So this is also quite useful for if you want to obviously drill it down to the nine, the nice um, um, key target. So HbA ones, the BP, cholesterol levels, BMI. So you can obviously put, you know, you can obviously narrow it down to whatever, whichever numbers you want to, to get a cohort of patients regarding. So that's quite self self explanatory, and also it explains the total number of patients as well that fall into these cohorts as well. And also you can narrow it back down by age group on this page as well. And also, this is basically a metrics page. So, if, you know, if you want to find out a bit more information as to how, you know, the, you know, those that are on the lower, lower, lower um, median and those are on the higher one as well. So you can do a comparison based on your own actual um, um, CCG or your practice. You can drill it down if you have patient information. It drills that down for you. So that's basically highlighted by um, age. So you can narrow it down by the age as well, and then obviously percentage of as well and then you can see the mean on here to know what's the, the, the mean average for these actual um, the HBA A1 distribution across the, um, the, the age groups so that gives you a bit more information on that as well you can narrow it down by the patient list if you need more information on that Okay, and then we have the key care processes based on the nine key care processes and they're set by the NICE, that's part of the NICE TAR guidelines. Um, you can narrow this down. Normally, it needs to be done every time you have a, a review for um, your, your, you know, as, as, you, as part of the annual review. These need to be completed most times. So you can narrow it if you want to change the you can change the time frame to, to six months or three months if you want to. But on here, you're able to obviously get more information as to which patients obviously have completed their key care processes. Um, and it just shows you in more detail. If you want to narrow it down, you can just highlight those who you you know have not completed this and then you can see those who have only got less than three and less and then that as well four and above and less than eight and then those that are nines and so if you want to drill it down further you can get your patient list to get more information on that and then we have the the complications page so this obviously talks about the various um, complications that you know the patients with diabetes might have and the total numbers as well so that would be quite useful for you to, if you want to obviously find out based on you know the time frames as well when they were diagnosed you can just hover over here that gives you a bit more information and that's the list here as well and the number of patients and you can get a bit more information so once you hover over it, it gives you more detail as to how things have progressed over time based on age and also by the time frame as well. And then the next page is a lifestyle change. So this covers those that are smokers um, that, have di that have diabetes as well. So it lets you know in more detail those who have been offered um, smoking cessation and those who have su successfully um, stopped smoking as a result of you know under t undergoing the smoking cessation program so that lets you know in more detail if you hover over here as well you can see those that have not been referred and can get a cohort of patients and those that have been referred so you can know your total numbers and a bit more information as well so that's quite clear and then the final page will be the structured education analysis so that kind of gives you you know if you want to get an overview of patients that have successfully completed their structural structured education so that gives you a total number as well being offered those who have completed and the ratio of those that have been completed to those that have been offered so that kind of gives you an overview as maybe if you want to improve numbers or obviously gives you an indication of who 
and what we're, we know areas that can be improved. It also lets you know on the graph as well, you know, the, the number of patients and also the ones, you know, that have obviously had the highest, um, you know, outcome as well based on this structural education.